Can you tell us about the Merkaba? Yeah, the Mer Merkaba is also a brain function. Uh, initially, when I wrote the first two books, The Flower of Life, Volume 1 and 2, uh, I uh, thought that it was the heart that was causing the rotational... There, there's a counter-rotating field of light, and the part that rotates uh, uh, counterclockwise to us, that, that, is, uh, that is the mind and the brain. But, but it is also, uh, we didn't know this then, but what's rotating clockwise and moving in the opposite direction... Uh, is actually the right brain, and uh, and it's our, that emotional body that we just talked about. You have to feel love in order to make this uh, the Merkaba function, but uh, you don't have to connect into the love that you would feel from your heart. So what the Merkaba is is a it's a well they're, 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 on one level it's a vehicle. In fact, in Hebrew, that's, the, that's what it means. Uh, Merkaba means chariot or, or a vehicle that can carry you from one place to another. And, uh, and it was, uh, we all knew what this was a long time ago. I mean, uh, uh, however, when we lost everything in Atlantis, we, dropped the, we lost the ability to even make a Merkaba, and we were uh, stranded, uh, left by ourselves. And we've all been left by ourselves now for the last 13,000 years. But the Merkaba has the potential of taking someone from one dimensional world into another dimensional world. When we die, that's what we do. We must have our Merkaba to get over into the other levels, or, only, uh, or we couldn't do it. But we do it unconsciously now. We don't do it consciously. And that's why we keep it reincarnating, because we, we die unconsciously and we have to keep doing this. But the Merkaba has many other uses. And, uh, and these are subtle and takes usually years to really understand. But it is part of the creation process. And so uh, when someone uh, creates anything out of nothing, um, uh, it eventually uh, moves in a very specific way through the body and then uh, uh, eventually comes to the pineal gland, the pituitary glands, the third eye opens up. Uh, beams of light come out of the head. A sphere appears around side the head, which uh, science has been able to photograph and actually see this. And then right out at your fingertips, if you stretch your arms out, is another sphere. And that's where the image from comes. And uh, 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 it, this science is, is almost, was almost lost. It was almost completely gone out of human awareness. And, and, and now uh, there are about 40 million people or more that are bringing it back. And so it's, uh, it, it's here now for sure, for, forever. So it's the human energy field. It's the physical body, human energy field, but it also connects the, uh, the, the left and the right sides of the brain together. It, it actually become, works like the corpus callosum that links the two together. And, and, it, uh, and from there, uh, there are very uh, practical things you can do. For example, I mean, you can program your Merkaba in ways that uh, it will... Um, it, it will function almost like magic. It looks like magic when you're doing it. You can heal yourself of anything whatsoever on earth. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, you can um, transform your uh, emotions. Uh, you can move in all kinds of ways and do things that are not possible uh, without it. And so it, it's, it has a, a kind of a human practical level to it also. It is a, it's a living field. It's alive. It's not... Uh, like a machine or something that is rotating. It's a very complex pattern, but it is, and it's a little bit difficult to actually begin to establish it back into the human body again. But, uh, you know, the first two books tell you exactly how to do it. It's not that hard. Can we call it? We what? Can we call it? Can you call it? Yeah, can we set an intention to connect with it and to rediscover it? And you can now. It was almost impossible when it first started because it wasn't in human consciousness. It was almost gone. And then slowly people all over the world began to do it and bring it back. And when they did, they would put that memory into the grids that are around the earth that we're all connected to. And now there are people all over the world that are just remembering it and living it. And they had never been to a school. They don't know anything on those kind of levels. They could not probably describe it uh, geometrically or ratios or speeds or mathematics involved with it but 
that doesn't really matter. Uh, they can they can bring it back and make it alive, and there are millions of people doing this now. Uh, it's it's very encouraging. <laughs> so what is what is it? Its relationship with the, like the Kundalini. Well, there is a relationship. Uh, the Kundalini is uh, it is an energy that comes from the base of the spine. There is one energy there, and there are five channels that run up the up the spine. Um, if the Kundalini, if the, if this one energy comes up one of those channels, we call that a sexual orgasm. If it comes up another channel, we call that a Kundalini experience, and it has a different purpose. Uh, the uh, if it if it's a sexual experience, it, it is for making babies, and it also is for other things that we don't know right now. We've long forgotten this stuff that has to do with the pro creation process. Sexual energy can create anything, actually, not just a baby, but anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, but if if that energy is purposely drawn up another channel, uh, and it, and it, and and you have the, a Kundalini experience. One of the functions is is that it it uh, it drives that person to find God. Uh, they they just can't help it. After they've had a Kundalini experience, uh, spirituality becomes the most important thing in their life, and they just won't stop, and they will never stop. They just keep going until uh, they have found uh, the source of life, which is within themselves. And uh, and there's other ones. There's one associated with the heart which people are starting to have experiences now, which is quite extraordinary. Uh, there's another channel you can move that energy up, but in order to do it, you must be centered in your heart space, in the sacred space of the heart. And if you do, once you get centered in there for a certain length of time, then uh, this amazing experience takes place where it's another, uh, like an orgasm, very much like a kundalini, only it's about, <laughs> I don't know, I'm guessing it's a hundred times more stronger and it lasts a very long time it lasts about 20 minutes but a white energy field that surrounds you and um, it's just it's, it's hard to believe until you actually have the experience of it and what it does though is there are external fields that are the heart creates around the human body they're called toroidal fields and there's two of them uh, heart math at Stanford was the one that mapped these and was able to find them and scientifically prove them mm -hmm. but around the Merkaba there are actually uh, thousands of these uh, tetra uh, uh, toroidal fields and they're all aligned with the spine but the the other fields are aligned with the heart itself so they're off just a couple inches but it might be two inches but it's a long ways and when you have this experience the toroidal fields that are generated by the heart move over and align and phase lock with the Merkaba fields and at that point um, a, a transition has taken place, and that person is permanently in their heart at that point. They will not go back the other way, and uh, and that is a significant uh, moment in a, in a person's life when that takes place. There are two other channels, but they are for uh, much longer in the future. We're not there yet. Uh, we can't do it from these bodies that we have. Uh, we will gain we will gain other bodies we don't know about this yet either but there are other bodies that we will um, achieve uh, they were all mapped out and uh, precisely out of Egypt uh, you can actually see the sizes and everything in Egypt of the statues but uh, so someday in the future we will human beings will experience these two other kinds of orgasms that come up that spine that have other purposes but right now there's only three available to us are you saying that physically we're going to become bigger like avatars? Avatar uh, is pretty interesting that James Cameron uh, was able to become aware of that. Yeah. Uh, we, our bodies, uh, are about to do exactly that. Uh, the height is that uh, uh, what we know is that uh, on other planets everywhere, all over, as well as this planet here, uh, that uh, when you reach this next level of consciousness, your body grows to a, a females grow to about 10 to 12 feet high, and males are about 14 to 16 Whoa. feet high. And we get this huge head and very massive brain compared to what we are now. And it is one of the five levels of consciousness that are possible with humans. And that's exactly what we are in the process of doing. 
we won't see that here because we won't be on this level. This is that we're talking on the third dimensional level of the Earth. Uh, that all takes place in the fourth dimensional level of the Earth. And, uh, uh, but that is exactly what the Mayans are predicting and the Hopi and everything right now is that we are, there, there's going to be this uh, pole shift, physical pole shift that will take place, a magnetic pole shift also that will precede it. And during that or sh shortly after it, uh, we will go, we will transform and in that transformation we go fourth dimensional, to, in fourth dimensional earth at, where, at which our bodies begin to change. We can predict it mathematically, exactly, uh, it's amazing at this point. But uh, so, how he figured that out, I don't know, but it was pretty good. It's probably in tune. Yeah, it probably is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so your your mathematical uh, background has tremendously helped you in this research because I read that originally you wanted to go for mathematics and science and then you're like something is wrong here I'm changing path and kind of yeah right I did I, I got down, I was in the last quarter of physics and math I only had to go just another couple more months and I decided not to do it and switched over to the right brain and studied fine arts and painting and uh, but the mathematics. And the understanding uh, was essential for what I had to do in, in my life, and uh, so it was perfect. Yeah. yeah. But do you, you have hopes for science to actually one day meet uh, quantum physics, you know, and spiritual teachings? I mean, um, I don't think quantum physics will do it because quantum physics has a lot of problems, and so does relativity, so does superstring theory. Uh, but yes, someday I believe that uh, spirituality in its purest and cleanest form and science in its purest and cleanest form are the same thing. There's no difference. They're, they're, they will be describing the same reality and will understand it in exactly. They'll be the same thing. Uh, Russia has just come out with a new theory of everything, which is the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen in my life. And uh, they can predict uh, every single thing. They can predict where every single photon will be any time in the future or the past. Uh, and that is a huge accomplishment, just purely by mathematics. And so what we think is uh, we think that we have free will and that everything is just happening exactly according to whatever we're doing and we're doing it. But uh, these mathematics seem to show another picture. And that is, is that uh, everything that's happening... Uh, is predetermined and, uh, and they can actually, the very words that we're saying right now can mathematically be determined. And so, um, wow. don't know where all this is going, but we'll soon find out someday, I guess. Mm. Do you, is there some steps for people that are beginning and really realizing the importance of living with an open heart?